As the summer is almost over, it begins to get chilly. This is a time for chrysanthemums to yearn for the cold, crisp sky. Where the Bengyulsa Trail begins, there used to be a temple called Gulbulsa. However, all that now remains is a rock, on the four sides of which are carved a number of Buddhas. This rock is a treasure of Korea. This massive mossy rock symbolizes the thousand-year-old spirit of the Silla people who pursued faith and beauty in life. A triad of Buddhas faces west. Because the rock is surrounded by mountains, the noises of the world fade from our ears. The Samguk Yusa tells how this rock came into being. When King Gyeongdeok, the 35th king of Silla, made an excursion to Baekyeolsa Temple, he heard a Buddhist invocation being recited underground. He dug into the ground and unearthed this rock with multiple Buddhas carved on its four surfaces. King Gyeongdeok then founded a temple on this site and called it Gulbulsa Temple, though its name has been corrupted to Gulsoksa Temple over time. It was a tradition in Korea and Japan to enshrine the Buddha of medicine on the east side, Shakamoni Buddha on the south side, Amitabha Buddha on the west side, and Maitreya Bodhisattva on the north side. Shakamuni Buddha and Amitabha Buddha are usually accompanied by two attendant Bodhisattvas. Let's take a closer look at this four-sided rock. On this rock, Amitabha Buddha looking west may be the chief Buddha. The head, made of different stone, has been added. His body is in relief, but looks rather imposing. The folds and hems of the lobe flow down lightly, and he stands on a lotus pedestal. An attendant bodhisattva stands either side of Amitabha Buddha. The bodhisattva of great power and wisdom on his right has regrettably had her head defaced. She is holding a bottle of dharma nectar in her right hand. On his left side stands the bodhisattva of great compassion with her big smiling face and her corona. She also has an imposing physique. One Buddha and one Bodhisattva stand side by side on the south side. The statue without a head is believed to be a Buddha, and the other a Bodhisattva. It is as if they have been liberated from the rock and are about to leave. On the breast and the stomach of the Bodhisattva, the sunlight flutters. How can the faintest moment of sunlight meet the Buddha's permanence and dare to flirt with it? The fluttering of the sunlight against the Buddha's clothes seems like a playful trick or a momentary distraction in the Buddha's timeless presence. It is extraordinary that one Buddha and one Bodhisattva are standing side by side. As the two are of nearly the same height, body, and shape, they look like brother and sister. Oh no, they are sisters! Expert tells us that this four-sided rock was half buried in the ground and was excavated by the Japanese in 1914 or 1915. Originally, there was a triad of Shakyamuni Buddha on the southern side. The Buddha with no head is believed to be the chief Shakyamuni Buddha. It was not long before the Japanese tore the head off 
along with the complete bodhisattva on the right side of the rock. Experts say that they can identify the delicate skirt of the dress of the bodhisattva on his right side, which the Japanese weren't able to destroy. As you can see from the remaining chiseled grooves, there used to be a high relief statue of a bodhisattva here. The remaining bodhisattva is one of the most amazing sculptures of Silla. Aren't this Buddha and bodhisattva beautiful? Where else can you find such exquisite Silla bodhisattva? They look like women to a layman's eye. They have feminine breast and slender waist with a touch of sensuality. There are innocent looks on their faces. Although the chief Buddha has lost his head, if you look at the Bodhisattva's face on his left, you can imagine its beauty. On the east side is the Buddha of medicine. Even at first glance, we can see that this Buddha is different in style from his companions on the south side of the rock. There is something reminiscent of Gauguin's Impressionism here. The object in his hand is a precious bead, symbolizing a medicine bowl. The eyebrows may remind you of the Choyong mask. His hands and feet also seem to be in the Impressionistic style. On the north side, it seems that the Bodhisattva statue is floating. Chisel marks like the teeth of a comb gather the light and beam it toward the Bodhisattva. On her right side, a Bodhisattva with six arms is inscribed. However, the lines are so indistinct that it's hard to recognize the shape. The colors were probably painted in during the Silla dynasty. Here is a restored drawing of the Bodhisattva from the Cultural Heritage Administration. Everyone was amazed to find the Yudambara flower here. It is believed to bloom every 3,000 years, a white thread like Yudambara. The foundation stones in the yard showed that there used to be a building protecting the rock against rain and snow. Roof tiles from the Joseon dynasty as well as the Korea dynasty have been excavated here. So it is highly likely that the rock of Buddhas was enshrined inside a building. When I was about to leave the rock, I was struck by a sense of pride in its beauty and at the same time by a feeling of deep regret because of the missing part of the Buddhas and the whole Buddha. When autumn sets in, the Buddhas on the rock will feel relieved to see the beautiful leaves of the oaks before bracing themselves for the long cold winter to come.